I spoke to a, a musician recently, Chris Boaty, who uh, does a oh yeah, I know Chris does a tremendous amount of touring. Now he said that one of the most important yeah. aspects of having a successful career is to be able to enjoy touring and also to be able to cope with living out of a suitcase. Do you enjoy the travelling that you do? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, <laughs> but Chris is a road hog. I mean, he's he's out of his freaking mind. He, Chris went on the road with Sting for like three years. Yeah, I don't think he row. has a house. He put his car on blocks, uh, rented his apartment, and was just and lived at a hotel. At one point, I saw Chris. We were on the road because uh, I'd say we're 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 pretty decent friends. We don't see each other a lot because we're on the road. But when we do, we always have a great time. And and um, I was teasing him one day about his road situation, and I didn't realize at that time that he had not had a home for like two or three years. He just lived in hotels. It's amazing. And he'd take his yoga mat and his <laughs> and whatever else gets him through the day when he's on the road, and uh, and just and absolutely adores living that way. Yeah, he was saying he gets the trumpet out in his hotel room and practices and gets uh, gets yeah. people listening outside his hotel room. Uh, right. So what do you do to keep your voice um, in tune? Do you, do you keep uh, rehearsing and practicing? Do you find you're always learning new things? Well, you kind of have to... Uh, I, I was very, very fortunate because I'm, I, I'm a classically trained singer. And um, I think that's the very best training you can possibly get. If you can sing opera, you can sing anything. And that's, that was the technique that I learned. And uh, the first thing you learn when you learn uh, the technique of an opera singer is that you have to get a ton of vocal rest. Now, the difference between being uh, an opera singer and doing clubs and concerts is you know, usually if you're doing an opera, you're going to get out of the theater no later than 10, 11 o'clock at night. And then you're not going to have anything happening again until the next night. Now, granted, you're singing for two or three hours straight and singing at a very, very high level. I mean, if, in the, if you were an athlete, you would be a decathlon athlete. Uh, that's how I always compare do, doing an opera to doing any other kind of music. But by the same token I mean you don't see opera singers hanging out after the show <laughs> and you know getting up the next morning early and doing a lot of chattering with their friends on the phone you can't do that and so one of the things that I learned from learning that technique is that you have to be very very disciplined and the road can really beat your your voice down you know it's much different for an instrumentalist to be on the road than it is for a singer you have to have a whole other set of disciplines and one of them is that when you're finished singing, you have to shut up mm. so that you can sing the next night. And sometimes you'll do venues that you have to do two shows in a night. And then you really have to get vocal rest. So really, one of the primary things you learn is that vocal rest is the most important thing you can do for yourself. Look after and your the voice. the second most important thing you can... Yeah, you have to look after your voice. You have to treat it like a baby, you know, and you have to live like a nun. And... Um, as I said, it's totally different for instrumentalists. They can go out after the show because they're the, you finish a show at night and you're very wired, and you have to learn how to come down and and not go and hang out with the musicians because <laughs> that's how they come down at the end of the night. If you do that as a singer, you won't have a voice the next night. So it's a whole other set of rules. That's why Chris loves being on the road because he's a dude and he plays trumpet. He doesn't have to sing the next day. And he gets because to work with all the great your, singers, that's too. That's inside your body. You know, if you're not taking care of your body and you're a singer, you're dead meat. Absolutely. Well, back on uh, September 11th, 2001, you were booked on that fateful United Flight 93 from Boston to San Francisco, but you had to change your flight uh, that day. How did that yeah, affect actually, it your going, life? It was going from New York, it was going from New York to, to San Francisco. New York to San Francisco. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's probably the major reason I hate traveling now, not, not because I ducked that bullet, but because, because that bullet being fired, you know, we've all had to uh, suffer the indignities of TSA all around the world, and it really makes traveling quite grueling and difficult. Um, you know, I, I'm, so, I'm so old <laughs> that I can remember when you would pull up to a plane 
maybe 20 minutes before you were supposed to board, you if you were driving yourself and you were going to, you know, kind of do a round trip, you'd valet park your car out in front of the airport and run inside and get on the plane. And that's what it was before September 11th. And now you have to get there, you know, two hours early and remove your clothing and get somebody's hand in your crotch and, and you know, take everything out of your little bag and you've got too many liquids and you, you got on high heels and take off your shoes and take off your belt and take... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have to do a strip tease and and get a free fi- uh, <laughs> a free frisking, and it's it's uh, it doesn't sound like anything, but when you have to do that every other day, it's very nerve wracking. And when you're doing it every other day in a different country with a different language and people that don't speak what you speak, or it's it's really 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 nerve wracking. I find it to be the most nerve wracking thing about traveling. That's why I really hate traveling at this point. I'm fine once I get where I'm going. I always have a great time once I land. But getting there has really become a difficult thing. And the airlines love to cram as many people onto a plane as they possibly can. So the seats are not always the most comfortable in the world. And the food is usually bad. And so it's traveling is not fun. It's well, just not fun. Unless you're Chris Bode. Well, you're, you're going to be heading to Australia very soon, just like Chris, but uh, hopefully you'll get a direct yeah. flight from uh, LA to uh, Melbourne and you'll be performing at the Melbourne International Jazz Festival, which was coming up on June 9th. Now, you're going to be featuring a tribute to Ella. It sounds like that festival is going to be a fantastic event. Yes, I've heard... Uh, uh, the other, as, a matter of, as a matter of fact, my assistant told me the other day other people that are going to be on the show, it's... It's just going to be a lot of fun for us. I don't know how much fun you guys are going to have, <laughs> but we're going to have a ball because it's just lots of people that I absolutely love to spend time with that are doing the show. So a lot of times we don't get to see each other. So when we do these kinds of shows and we get to see each other, it's it's a wonderful time for us. We just have a great time listening to each other's music and and uh, hanging backstage and talking. And it's, 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 it's a fun, it's going to be a very fun festival for sure. So you'll be singing some of the songs uh, as a tribute to Ella. Uh, tell us about some of the some of the tracks you'll be choosing for that festival. Well, actually, everything uh, on the Forella album is in the show, and I've been doing this show, I guess, about eight years now. I'm I'm pretty sure the album's been out that long, and uh, the show has gone through uh, many forms and transformations since I first did the the original recording. It's really kind of become uh, a bit of a theatrical piece because I started doing dialogue in between the songs that are on the album to to tell stories about Ella and uh, stories about myself and just stories about music in general and, and how Ella came to be Ella Fitzgerald with quotations around her name. And uh, so it's really a little bit more than just uh, me singing, you know, so a set list uh, with so going from song to song and uh, not having too much of a relationship with the audience on it, on any other level. So it, it's because um, I uh, quite a while ago I decided uh, th- as a singer I didn't want to just go on stage and sing. So I really uh, very often I'll have to. F- fill out a form and say what it is that I do to make a living and I always put entertainer because that's really my goal when I do a show so it, it it's about more than just uh, hearing it's about more than just hearing Ella sing we try to we try to uh, to be uh, a little bit at a, at a higher level of enter- entertainment than that and and uh, and I've been having lots of fun doing this show this year in spite of all the traveling um, I just got off the road um, last week from Europe and uh, and doing some experimental things with the show where I've been doing the show in other parts of the world exactly the way I do it in the States and that involved a lot of dialogue and a lot of humor and it's been very interesting to do the show in places like Finland and and Spain and you know and you have audiences that uh, really understand English quite well but you don't know if the jokes you're telling or the stories you're telling are necessarily going to translate to another language if they'll get the full impact of of what I might be talking about they they everybody gets the music you know that is the universal language but I decided to be very daring in the last couple of years and and expand the show out more when I do it internationally and the reaction has been incredible 
it's really been inspiring. And I was just in New Zealand a few weeks ago and uh, left all the all of the uh, what I consider to be American humor in the show, and everybody got every single story. So it's uh, obviously I will be doing it the same way in Australia. Yeah, well, we're all looking forward to it, Patty. It sounds like it's going to be a wonderful show and a great festival, and I'm sure that many of our listeners will be attending and seeing you live on stage. So uh, once again, thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us, and I hope you have a wonderful time in Melbourne. Oh, I know I will. I've been there before. I absolutely love it. I can't wait to get back.